Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. So just a quick intro about me. Um, my name is Kumar and I have totally 10 years of experience. Uh, last five years I'm working uh, in CPQ domain. Um, mostly with Aptos, but I do have experience with uh, other CPQ as well, uh, Salesforce CPQ as well as an Oracle CPQ. I worked on uh, these two part, uh, tools as well. Um, right now I'm playing a role of solution architect in my um, current project, which is again Aptos CPQ implementation. So what, uh, before moving ahead, uh, Sashi, if you just uh, let me know, um, let just small intro about yourself and what's your expectation out of this demo. We'll try to quickly touch with those. Sure, my name is Shashi and uh, I have more than uh, 10 years of experience. Uh, predominantly, until I started as an Oracle, then moved to Salesforce. I worked on Salesforce CPQ. Uh, my next project would be an after CPQ, which I never worked. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be, you know, that complicated or anything like that because any CPQ is one and same. So I'm very well aware of the the concepts and all, except that, you know, on the Aptus, I never got a chance to work on that. So uh, before my next project starts, I wanted to come up to speed, uh, really, uh, you know, to a, to a detailed level, like what you're shared on the content, your course content, I'm exactly looking for that kind of fair stuff and also help me in pointing to the right direction in achieving my, achieving my certification towards Aptos, any pointers or any kind of, uh, you know, uh, material that you can point me to, how to prepare or a question uh, or a uh, or dumps or anything like that will help me prepare better. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so, um, um, that they've said definitely we will um, help in that path. So what we will see today, we will talk about those only first, uh, what kind of training we are giving, what are the topics, what will be the methodology, how we are helping, uh, those things and any open questions related to it, uh, we can discuss quickly. So, Okay, so this session uh, agenda uh, Aptos overview, I will just quickly touch base uh, uh, on that. In code to CAS, of course, uh, a code to CAS and uh, CPQ background overview just on a high level. Uh, I will not spend too much time because whenever we'll start our training, we will go and, you know, talk this uh, topic in details. So basically, what is actual code to CAS process, how Aptos CPQ fits in that flow where Salesforce uh, fits in that flow, all those things we'll discuss about it. Yeah, um, before you continue to this topic, I would also like you to show me uh, what are all the contents you will be covering. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So mostly we will talk about um, uh, those things, okay? Sure. So uh, just quickly, uh, I will, as I said, on these topics on a high level, I will not spend too much time on it. Um, of course, we know that nowadays uh, Aptos and Salesforce, both CPQs are in, uh, both are in boom. Uh, most of the clients who are migrating towards cloud come, you know, which means uh, taking Salesforce as a uh, tool platform, uh, they are considering these two vendors. One is Salesforce CPQ itself, and other one is Aptos CPQ. And uh, in terms of certain areas, still Laptus is strong uh, as compared to Salesforce CPQ. CP, Salesforce CPQ is still ev uh, evolving in certain areas, uh, but Aptus is, you know, leader in most of the areas, and they have means they have built a very strong tool on top of it. Um, <clears throat> just on a key level, high level, like strong product offering, does it means that it has a of use product management where I can go and you know design the variety of products based on that industry because we know that based on the industry the nature of products changes right so uh, Aptus try to support all different types of industry most of them 
if not then there is a huge scope of customization too where you can go and customize the things right uh, uh, that we will see later even in the in in the uh, pricing part itself where uh, there are lots of things are out of the box but on top of it you can go and do a lot of customizations there they have very inbuilt apis they have callback classes that uh, we will go and talk during our training session um, market presence of course uh, as i said it's now currently um, in 2017 forester and the garter is on the top uh, in recent 2019 in some quadrant uh, as i said salesforce cpq is on top in some quadrant after cpq is on top so it's some kind of mixture i will say so what um, makes this uh, difference uh, you know how, how do they rate it uh, in what terms so you know? one is like customer satisfaction second one is the easiness of implementation easiness uh, third is like um, um, uh, maintenance, maintainability, all those they are at Gartner, Forrester, they have a different, these are the different four, five or six quadrants. Okay. That's fine. So, uh, but, you know, if I have a quote of, uh, you know, more than 10,000 lines, you know, let's say it's not a possibility, but it could be a possibility if it is MDQ kind of a quote or, you know, wherein uh, there is a bill of materials or anything like that. Hmm. Now, can you explain me? Uh, how is it different from Aptus to that of Salesforce CPQ? How many lines can Salesforce CPQ handle and how many lines can Aptus handle? Okay, so for this, right, uh, since you asked, but we have um, all those things that will cover in the in the, uh, in the the training, but, but for your particular question, right, first we have to understand this, that no matter Aptus or Salesforce CPQ, both are nothing but a managed package, Correct. right? Yeah. And uh, the page which we are seeing, it's nothing but a, a VF page or which is built in Angular JS, which is I'm talking about Aptus card. Even uh, Salesforce CPQ is also nothing but a Visual Force page only, which is yeah. Lightning compatible. Now we do know that uh, a Visual Force page has this uh, view state right limitation, which is 135 KB. Mm-hmm. Now no matter every vendor uh, which is trying to sell their product they can claim n number of things but in reality right uh, we know that this limit nobody is going to bypass that now coming to the exact number i will say nobody can claim that why because it depends on multiple varieties of things for an example your nature of product which let's say i've just created a simple standalone product nothing fancy then and no product rule is associated with it no price rule is associated with it i don't have any configuration any customization nothing sort of things right so it's a, in that case it's a simple business then i can go and add let's say thousand or more than thousand products right mm-hmm. but in if i will take the reverse example where i have a complex bundle it has mm-hmm. multiple attribute rules associated, multiple price dimensions are there, then you will end it up, let's say, 200 or 300 lines only. Mm-hmm. Right? So because everything which we are building behind the scene is nothing but a uh, logic, that custom logic which is written, because these are the managed package, even though we thinking that it's a configuration, we are configuring the rule, but behind the scene, when we are opening a card, right, they are lot, they are, this configuration they will convert it into the logic so that they can populate it on the cart okay so, so it's number of line depends on multiple things uh, and that we will I mean once we will start that and we'll talk about it uh, coming to your last thing like the 10,000 I know it's unrealistic number in in, in this because uh, no no tool no matter Aptos, Calidus uh, Salesforce 10,000 is not possible but you may ask like uh, uh, there are certain industry that I know that they have um, a quotation where okay, they can have these number of lines in the quote uh, answer to it is um, if we say if we see the traditional way of doing quotation right um, uh, if you will go and talk to this Aptos guys and Salesforce guys they will say that you have to first uh, change the approach Mm-hmm. What does that mean is like the, the way you should design the product that it should not 
come those lines in the cart because everything happens in the cart so they will first ask you to redesign the product so that you don't have to add 10000 lines mm. because think about it adding 10000 line also for a sales rep how many uh, days it will take or how many hours it will take to to generate that code so there are multiple factor it on top of it if it's no you will um, so i remember one client where i made it for 6000 lines so it's all custom solution how long did it take to load the code? Uh, that's what I mean the custom solution. It's uh, we will talk about it, but it's not straightforward one There are multiple cars associated with it. What we did was we created uh, Multiple child codes under it. There are multiple cards sales mm -hmm. will go and add it and then our custom logic will bring all those cart lines and put it in the code lines in the parent code right where there is no cart. It's just that code lines and that code lines is summing up and creating order line and asset line so there are some things which we'll discuss but the point whole point was it's a at the end it's nothing but a managed package correct so since that you said managed package right salesforce cpq is also a managed package and uh, you know there is no need of any licenses or anything like this they give you 90 days to practice right what about after cpq no, so even for the just to correct Salesforce CPQ, 30 days they will give, not 90 days. No, okay? no. I, I worked on Salesforce CPQ, I got 90 days. Uh, maybe because uh, that's what there are two categories. One is like if you if you get something from the premium partner, you will mm. get that. But in general, 30 days. But Aptos is not available. So problem with Aptos is if you go and even find any problem in Aptos in Google it, you will not get any solution related to Aptos. Mm. The problem with Aptos is they have the closed community hmm. and uh, they did not open anything publicly. Hmm. So you just find any problem, right? And type for Salesforce CPQ, you will get bunch of things related to Salesforce CPQ because Salesforce CPQ is the publicly available all the materials. Mm -hmm. However, in Aptos, you will not find a single solution in Google. That's the problem. It's a completely closed community. Mm. So even with the Aptos, what they will give you, um, uh, you have to go and install that uh, installation link directly from their community. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, not like in Salesforce CPU, it is freely available. Means anybody yeah. can go and uh, install it in any org. But in Aptos, that installation link is not available. Okay. So that has to be uh, from the partner community and partner community is only available for their their customers which mm. is basically uh, implementing some projects ad along with that. That's okay. the issue of the Aptos. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so moving on, um, we already talked about it. Uh, it's uh, basically um, Aptos is nothing but again is a kind of managed package which is built on their Salesforce platform and uh, behind the scene even the Aptos is using as I said all those custom objects formula field workflow Apex class and all even the customization that we will see later uh, uh, that is also you will go and write it in the Apex uh, code which is basically that language is supportable on Apex on Salesforce platform right so mm -hmm. with that um, we can extend their functionality and write codes on top of it but coming to the database side, um, since it's a managed package, all the data will still reside inside the Salesforce. There is no integration required. Um, even uh, for the API calls, no integration required. That's all inbuilt in the package. We have to just call it as a normal Apex class. So you mean to say, let's say I have uh, Oracle's uh, order management, right? or SAP order management. If I do do any integration, all that I have to do is just uh, write an Apex API, a RESTful API and call it, or will there be any middleware? No, no, so I think you maybe let me reiterate. So here we are talking about the Aptos. So if you, was, if you implemented Oracle or any other SAP tool, that's another third party tool, right? Mm -hmm. So third party tool, it means since all the data is just, reside inside the Salesforce you have to basically implement of course an integration uh, if you want to use any middleware middleware or normal rest API or SOAP API call mm. right because for that for the Salesforce it's not within their native system it is outside their native system I'm saying um, 
the data uh, which you are creating for adapters that you don't need to do any integration because it's inside the cell source secondly for customization they have some inbuilt uh, method apis are there which for an example product rule right which cannot be possible let's say you want to automate something mm. you don't want to go and click any button to calculate or to load the cart you mm. want that moment i will just click, click one button my cart will create pricing will happen you know a template will generate everything will you want to automate so all for that they have created the api let's say one api is to add a product there is a method called add product that's their api so you have to just call and pass the variables uh, you don't need to open a cart automatically product will get added mm. right so that kind of thing but if you after order let's say you have any erp system where you want to send that data definitely you need a middleware or normal integration like because yes it's a salesforce to the other third party system okay, mm -hmm. okay. yeah now this is for your previous question the first question what what are the different um, uh, criteria on which gartner basically evaluate so uh, i have just because that i just added this slide so if you see there are multiple i have earlier i have compared oracle and aptos because these are the top two now it seems aptas versus cpq cells for cpq oracle came i think at that third but just to see that how on what are the quadrants basically they are evaluating and uh, and and then they are basically taking on an average mm. okay uh, so this is right now we just talked about it it's all inside the sales force so first because many client has this open questions right because they are worried about their data uh, um, uh, and security all those things so that it's simply straightforward that they don't have if they rely on sales force they have a legal uh, uh, document signed with sales force regarding privacy and all that will still stand true because aptas does not have any uh, separate uh, uh, database or any other separate security policy okay. so all it has to adhere the salesforce okay. but if you see that the system which is a, i'm just showing outside that is nothing but the erp system which is just, it is outside this cloud and then the here you need um, normal integration which is required middleware and all those things okay, okay. Uh, now quickly touching what is code to cast uh, we will go deep down when once we will start uh, our training uh, but in nutshell code to cast is if you see this cycle from customer when customer calls and shows their interest and asking for a quotation for a certain product till revenue recognition and generation which means here uh, for me as a vendor right or as a service provider i will get cash out of it whatever i am providing the service so mm -hmm. that's the complete cycle under it there are multiple phases are there uh, like if you see first a customer will ask for a quotation uh, as a sales rep i will go generate a quote send that proposal under it there are multiple stages are there the proposals uh, like approval process it will go and there are in number of things uh, if that you know um, uh, proposal is accepted by that client then it will go to that legal team here basically the CLM comes comes into the process again it's not a mandatory but that's another module of aptas that CLM contract life cycle management where you will legal team will come and you know ask for the contract sign under certain legal obligation here if your product need that and then uh, as I said this will kind of kind of optional thing i can directly jump from proposal to order generation and once order is generated order lines i will send it to the fulfillment system which is um, uh, it could be anything once that product is fulfilled that indication will again come back to after saying that order is fulfilled and moment your order is fulfilled those order lines become the asset lines and uh, and then that uh, um, they will go for the payment part uh, ERP system will generate the invoices and send it to customer and they will generate uh, 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 they will get that payment and once that payment has been done and as I said your order become then asset and if your product is subscription based products which requires a renewal after certain duration then it will go under the renewal cycle 
right so that's in in business process which we are saying code to cash nowadays there no new terminology which is lead to cash which is basically starting from the marketing cloud from lead generation campaign and all those things till uh, opportunity and from opportunity this code and till revenue is okay, okay so question here is right again uh, if you go back to that right until order management is fine, right? Because you have contract order management, but when you do the payment, actual payment, that's financials, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there is nothing called financials or financial year in closing or anything like that in Salesforce, right? Until Correct. Club. So what will you do? So that's what I, as I said, right? From here, your ERP systems comes into the picture. So Correct. first of all, now coming to your question, now this Dreamforce Salesforce introduced another package called Salesforce Billing. Mm -hmm. Okay, to handle this part again, uh, it's a kind of managed package you have to install and you have to pay it separately for that license. That's number one. Correct. Second, uh, uh, nowadays there are other vendors also comes into the picture, Joda, right? Um, there are other um, uh, cloud uh, vendors are there key players but Salesforce billing is as I said just they have launched it it's a very right now I can say premature tool will just handle very simple scenarios of payment uh, it will not go and handle multiple uh, complicated uh, payment system taxation policy and all those things even Salesforce billing they are saying right now they are not handling the taxation policy of US and Brazil because these are the two complex uh, uh, taxes policy so uh, Aptus has uh, integrations to Vertex and all? So that's what, uh, see, integration again, I will go back to my previous comment, right? Because Aptus does not have anything to do. It's, if we are talking integration, it has to Salesforce because nothing at the end, this is Salesforce custom objects where data resides, order and order line for an example, right? right? These, are, these are nothing but a custom objects. Now it's up to you what methodology you want to use and send that data from Salesforce to other third party system. If let's say I'm using MuleSoft, somebody can use uh, Dell Bumi, Informatica, anything. Or I can just uh, create one outbound messages to send that information do you want one-way communication, two-way communication? Here, a whole integration uh, planning and design needs to happen. And that not, you have to just think about Aptas. Again, reiterating, it's a Salesforce to your, let's say, NetSuite, you are using ERP, so it's integration between Salesforce and NetSuite, mm -hmm. right? So, because at the end, the data which is there inside the custom object of Salesforce only. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that point, that integration point will help you to uh, send the data, not just for the Aptos object. Let's say I want to send the account information. I want to send the uh, uh, contact information also, right? Addresses. Yeah. All those things because for fulfillment, if it is in hardware, I need address. So okay. that also I have to send. So those okay. things also I can send through those integration points. Okay. Also in Salesforce CPQ in the configuration sections, right? Uh, if it is a uh, you know a simple code that can be created, it, they'll give you an option of whether you want to make it as a subscription-based products or is it a asset-based products? Is it the same thing in Aptus? Is there any configuration that it needs to be done? At the it's a little bit different. It's um, um it's an, not the way uh, you are seeing in Salesforce CPQ. Uh, Salesforce will give you most of the things you are handled on the product level, like you said, it's asset based or subscription based, all those things. But here, you have to uh, play differently on the pricing part. So, okay. on the pricing, uh, you have to say it's a one time or it's a recurring product, all those things. Mm -hmm. So, on the product, uh, <clears throat> these things are not uh, applicable on the Aptus product object. Okay. So, these things are not applicable. Okay. Yeah, means the question is, can I design in Aptus? Answer yes, because every industry needs one time in subscription page. Right. But it's a different way, because in Salesforce OPQ, most of the things you can handle at the single object product itself. Correct. Correct. But here you have to... Uh, you know, uh, uh, regular products is fine, but you know, a few companies, right? I mean, your end customers, they sell products with services also, or licenses. Correct. Correct. So. Yeah, yeah. 
<coughs> and th that is why I said, I mean, uh, it it cannot be restriction. If it that will be the restriction, no one will go and purchase apters. But the for your question, how we will design? It's a design in a different way. You have to touch different objects, custom objects under the apters. But the but that product can be designed. Okay. Okay. Okay, is billing uh, also there in Aptos? Uh, like, you know, we have Salesforce billing as an, you know, we have yes, Salesforce. Yes, yes. Aptos oh. billing is there. Um, uh, if you see the next slide, right, uh, I have just highlighted what are the top uh, modules are there in Aptos. Uh, and I have highlighted uh, based on the demand and the client uh, which are basically using their modules. So if you see CPQ on top, so which means most of the clients who are using Aptas, they are using uh, mostly for CPQ, then the next will be the CLM, and third is XAuthor. So these all are different models. After that, if you see revenue management is nothing but that billing one, but mm -hmm. incentive and e-commerce. I have put it in a in a little bit uh, in a said mad manner. Reason being is uh, these are not widely used currently. Mm -hmm. Still, because that's an, even if Aptas, uh, in these areas are not that mature because ERP system, you, you know, you know, that's a huge and vast, right? So that is why even these vendors, right? They did not uh, go with that level of maturity because it will require huge time, huge money, and the licensing cost will going to be a very high. So they made these modules for the small vendors or the small client who who do not have uh, or who do not want to implement ERP because of license or whatsoever. So they can go and do, you know, purchase these modules uh, that can fulfill their small business requirements. But for the big business, it's still uh, yeah, yeah. Again, for, for, your CLM, for your CLM, right? How is it different from Conga? Conga is uh, 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 again um, it's it's a kind of same thing different vendor Salesforce um, you know promoting Conga composer to generate the document okay. and all but it uh, but Conga is mostly the document generation tool okay. okay but the CLM is a whole your contract life cycle is involved along okay. with the document generation okay so mm -hmm. um, for if you are going to use Conga, then in the Salesforce CPQ, there is a small part of the contract is management is there. Then you have to use contract management plus Conga, like that. Um, and the CLM is a whole complete tool itself, starting I means every uh, life cycle is there of your contract life cycle management. So is it mandatory in uh, Salesforce CPQ to use Conga? No, no, no. Okay. Okay, got it. Not one Yeah. Uh, yeah, CPQ. We will go again. Uh, this I'm just touching these topics. This we all go and talk in detail. CPQ. What? So C. What CPQ? It's a three word, which is configure, price, and code. Configure again. It's a product okay. configuration okay. and okay. whatever you are yeah. doing. So again, these are the. Don't go with this day one start date. It's a uh, I have put it this day for the classroom, but let's just focus on the topics that we will go and touch. Uh, of course, for the fundamental application, fundamental, uh, where we will talk about their standard functional for key aptus terminology because that terminology will be used throughout the session. So mm -hmm. we will go and first talk about these. What are those? Uh, in basically, we know CPQ, but in aptus we will call something else for that particular thing. Okay. So, for an example, uh, option group here in the Aptas we are saying in the Salesforce CPQ we are calling as a feature. So, like that. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we'll come to product management. Uh, prod project, uh, product management and under it uh, we will see standalone bundle options. I mean, all the different types of product, how we are going to associate option, option group. Under it, uh, we will also talk about category, field expressions, uh, how we are going to um, maintain or do the maintenance, run the maintenance of. Then product attribute group, attribute and attribute group. Um, here we will talk about all those, um, how we are going to, uh, means 
attribute based pricing are also there how i am going to put an attribute inside and bundle inside and stand alone uh, how we are going to create attribute group then product visibility till here uh, we are dealing till product management okay yeah. after that uh, we'll start with that pricing pricing part pricing management uh, here we will see the different types of pricing like usage based pricing tier based pricing uh, cumulative pricing range pricing right customer based pricing um, uh, like there are a uh, quantity based pricing volume pricing and then accordingly we will see all those different types of uh, discountings are there one time pricing subscription based pricing fixed pricing all those things are there okay. means i did not put in the sub topic i just wanted to highlight the major topic otherwise I, if i will start putting sub topic the list will be too huge so do not want to confuse that's just focus on the major thing um, then here we will talk about all the rule management which will constraint rules basically it will help to automate our um, product design and as well as the pricing part Good. right it has a different uh, uh, variations are there under the rule like validations warning auto inclusion and exclusion all those things um, then what we have a, can we write any custom rules yeah 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 filter rules we can write mm -hmm. we okay. can write um then uh custom settings of course uh, uh, in order to run managed package there are various settings are there um that is pretty much required to run our system and uh, that we will talk about it like for an example when we are installing any package for the first time uh, what are the settings are required and later if I have to change something on the product level or the pricing level what are the things hello what are the settings uh, I have to touch all those things that we will see uh, here we have a quote management where we will go and talk about the quote life cycle which will let's say new business add-on renewal how i'm going to do that all those things and how basically i'm going to add a product create assets create order order lines and then later renew it right so those things we will go and talk in the quote management part this is so the customization uh, are we going to go until quote renewal or is it also contract life cycle management too no contract life cycle we are not touching it because okay. it's a huge itself um, um, as I said, right, it has its uh, different modules under some modules are there. So we will um, see just related to whatever the, is applicable for CPQ. We will see that. Um, the next is that uh, its whole customization. Uh, it's if you see all those callback classes, which means the things which cannot be done through out of the box, then I can go and write code on top of it to extend the functionality okay uh, I, here I did not mention that API classes we will talk about those API classes as well mm -hmm. under the customization part so if you see the these are basically for an example validation callback right so there are certain scenarios where you cannot achieve through constraint rules using Correct. validation mm -hmm. so then I can go and write a code for it okay for an, then the same thing is happens pricing callback where certain things i cannot achieve through out of the box i can go and write custom on top of it yeah. and last if you see is um, that performance which you are right now the scenario which you are saying like if i have a too many number of lines like that there are multiple scenarios related to performance uh, that is why i put it a separate topic performance troubleshooting we here we will first talk about do and don'ts right in aptus because aptus will not stop you to you know do certain things because ultimately it's a managed package you can do whatever you salesforce is allowing you to do but in in uh, in based on our practice on our experience um, what should we do and what should we don't do uh, that we will here we we'll talk about it and that is the next topic the card performance and how it will impact the card performance so that we'll also go and talk 
and these things uh, whenever we are touching any topic right whatever is applicable related to performance we will talk about it it's nothing that at the end we will talk right but here we will basically summarize each and everything and whatever is required at the cart level at the org level customization what i have to keep it in the mind everything we will come here and talk about it okay. and last is a data troubleshooting because we all know that aptus or any cpq project is nothing but a totally data driven project basically all the things which we are designing right it's nothing but a data and then and behind the scene these tools are basically compiling those data into code and showing it on the cart so sometimes uh, while configuration we do some uh, mistakes so how we are going to troubleshoot them how we will go and identify that what mistake i have done is there any way to identify it and then i will go and rectify that so those things we will talk about and all these again these things you uh, it's all based on my experience whatever i have seen till date what are the common mistakes that we are doing during the project implementation uh, the uh, means i will try to deliver that because these things are nowhere even documented anyway sure. So three things that so, I can ask, right? Uh, so on the course management, there is something called as code collaboration, right? Uh, because you know, in a typical uh, customer environment, what happens is you know uh, they wanted uh, you know the code to be passed on to the within the team so that you know the other team member can go and choose what's our option or probably any other product category class that he needs to add. He can go and add it. You know, uh, there is a functionality called as code collaboration. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can, there is a code collaboration. There is something called favorite cart also. Uh, as yes. I said, uh, I did not. I just highlighted on a you know uh, major yes. topic. These are because, no, I, just said, uh, because I will just go and touch a small small. The list will be huge. Yeah. So we will talk about it. There is a as I said collaboration. There is something called a favorite yes. cart where it's a. Uh, I am a sales Mostly, I am you know doing a same same type of pro adding same type of product again and again. So what I will do, I will save it as a favorite cart. So right. I will get a drop down. I don't have to go and select the product again and again. There yeah. is something called uh, guided selling as well, where uh, yeah. um, where yeah, that is what I wanted to ask uh, how to do yeah. the guided, uh, guided selling yeah, yeah. and so also that, approvals, right? Um, approvals is a big piece. Yes, approvals is also there. So that is why I'm not able to find the latest um, um, uh, what I will say the content actually. Otherwise, uh, uh, I have added all those things there. Uh, but yeah, for your answer, yes, approvals is there. Guided selling, a favorite cart, uh, mass updates, all those things are there. Correct. So these are all very commonly used scenarios, right? Correct. Correct. So, so I assumed it's a part of all quoting, right? So that is why I correct. put it as in a quoting. So thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.